Okay, friends, welcome back to part two of making your own multi-layered SVG cut files using Procreate. So this is part two. If you missed part one, go check it out over here. We, in part one, went over like kind of the main idea of Procreate, went through all the toolbars, how to use the brushes, a very beginner level Procreate introduction and we drew our SVG design in Procreate. So if you haven't watched that part, you definitely need to. <laughs> so go check it out first and then come back here because in this video, we're gonna talk about how to now convert that to a true vectorized SVG. So quick review, there are two different kinds of files that we work with as crafters. The first are um, pixel files and those are like PNGs or JPEGs. They are flat. So all the information in that file is housed in one flat layer, any colors, any uh, detail, it's all on one layer. And in crafting land, we would use files like that for print then cut, stickers, sublimation files, anything that we're gonna be um, not really caring about needing multiple layers. But in an SVG file, which stands for scalable vector graphic, we need it to be vectorized. And if you want like the nitty gritty, what that essentially means is that the computer or whatever you're using has like traced the outline of each layer of that image to create like a map for your Cricut or your silhouette or whatever you're using to then trace and cut out. So because SVGs house their information in that way, we can have multiple layers stacked on top of each other, each with different information, different vectorized maps, so to speak, that your machine can then follow. So SVGs are really cool because they allow us to create multi-layered designs that we can house different information on each layer of. And as a crafter, typically what we're doing is we're putting each different color we want to use on a different layer. Procreate though is a digital art app. It's an illustration app in its truest sense. And so the files we're creating, they have layers. We've probably made it with layers in mind, but it's really only used for pixel images or for flat images like PNGs or JPEGs. So if we wanna use Procreate to make true multi-layered SVG cut files and we wanna preserve those layers that we created in Procreate, we have to do something else with that file to make it vectorized. So in this video, we're gonna go over two different ways you could create a multi-layered SVG using what you created in Procreate. So without further ado, let's get into it. <laughs> we're gonna spend the majority of our time on the computer today, but I am just gonna show you really quickly how to export your graphic from Procreate to wherever you're gonna put it. So I would recommend doing this next step on a computer, especially because we're gonna be using SVG Trace for one of our methods and the computerized, uh, the web-based version is free. So I'm just gonna airdrop my file to the computer, but you could also email it to yourself, text it to yourself, whatever you wanna do. So here I am in Procreate. I'm gonna open up my layers panel. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uncheck the background layer because we don't need the background. We just want our SVG that we made. So I'm gonna uncheck that layer so it's not visible anymore. And then I'm going to export my file. So I'm gonna go over to the little toolbar here, click share. And then I want to share this in two different ways. For SVG Trace, we just need to share it as a PNG. So I'm gonna select that, and then I'm gonna export it to my computer over here. So that's for the first method, that's for using SVG Trace. But I also wanna show you a second method today. And to use that method, we actually want each individual layer to be exported separately. So I'm gonna come down here to where it says share layers, and I'm gonna share each PNG file as a separate layer. That's gonna make sense in just a minute. But for now, just get both exported over to your computer and then we'll go through the actual process of converting them. Okay, so we are done with the iPad portion. Let me close her up. And now we're gonna hop over to the computer. I'm gonna start screen sharing over here so you can see what I'm doing. And really, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you while I'm getting this part set up, this process feels a lot scarier than it actually is. Um, SVD Trace is very easy to use, and so I think that you are going to be really pleased with it. Inkscape is the second platform we're gonna use, so I'm gonna show you kind of a different way to do it. And it's a very robust platform. You can do a lot on it. 
Some people actually create SVGs from scratch in Inkscape. So it's a really robust and cool platform to learn. But I want you to know that there's so much more we could do in Inkscape that we're not gonna do in this video. So if you wanna know more about Inkscape, let me know in the comments below. I'd be happy to make a bigger video on it. But today I'm just showing you how to convert what you drew into an SVG file, which is a great skill to learn in Inkscape. And it's honestly a good place to start. Okay, so we're gonna start over here in SVG Trace. When you go into SVG Trace, you're gonna see your library of everything you've done before. Um, I have done quite a bit in here. Yours is probably gonna be blank, but you, uh, if you're on like your home screen, there may be a button that says like converter to go to the converter. Mine just goes automatically here because I'm logged in. But go ahead and create an account. If you don't already have one, you can create a free account and then click to go to the converter and you'll be here. So then we wanna click our upload button and I'm just gonna go ahead and grab my artwork that I just imported, the one where it's just one layer. And SVG Trace is really cool because it uses the power of AI to turn this into a true SVG file. And it's gonna kind of grab what colors it sees in your image. So it's got the black here and then it has our pink, um, our red hearts and our green. And it actually grabbed every color that we need. Sometimes when you're uploading an SVG to SVG Trace, it won't grab every single color. Um, like if, let's just pretend it didn't grab the green. And then you could use your little eyedropper to just click on the color that it's missing and it'll add it to your panel over here, which is really nice. Okay, so at this step, that's really all you need to do. There are these little sliders down here that allow you to affect the smoothness, the speckling. Maybe you wanna simplify those curves a little bit. You can do all that before you hit preview, but that's kind of like a uh, trial and error game. And I always recommend just try it at the default settings. And then if you notice you need a little adjustment, you can go back and change those sliders at that point. So we're not gonna do anything else here. We're just gonna hit next. It's gonna tell you, hey, this is what it's gonna look like. That's great. It looks exactly like we drew it. And so we wanna then open our editor. Now this is where we can really look around and see how it did. There's like my little stray mark there that I forgot to remove, but this is where I can see every layer. So I could click on each layer individually and see there's my face, there's all my pink stuff, there's my um, cherry stems, and then there are my little cherries. Now the only thing to note about SVG Trace is that it doesn't know that there's um, like a full heart underneath this face. So it's gonna use like, almost like if you were using a knockout um, in Cricut Design Space or like subtractive um, layering. So like you can see when I look at the hearts, the space where the face is is like cut out almost. And that's just how this technology works. So when I layer this, I just need to make sure to put the face like right on top of where it goes because there will be like a hole there. That's really the only downside I see with SVG Trace is it just makes your layering, you have to be a little bit more precise because there is gonna be like a hole there if there's something else on top of it. And that's just how their technology is built. So knowing that, you could go in and use some of their editors to like try to autofill, um, but I find that sometimes it doesn't do like the best job at doing it perfectly. Um, the erase tool is really good. The vacuum tool is also really good for like kind of sucking up sections that you wanna remove. But all in all, um, I try not to mess with it too much. Like I might come in here and use my um, erase tool to kind of get rid of uh, like that section. But that's really mostly all that I do editing wise in SVG Trace. In Inkscape, which is the other method we're gonna talk about in a minute, you have a little more control and you can do like truly additive layers that are stacked on top of each other without having like a hole underneath. And so for some kinds of SVGs, I just prefer that. That's why I wanted to show both methods in this video. But this one is by far quicker, by far simpler, and certainly works. It just might mean your layering later needs to be a bit more precise so you don't see that hole underneath. Okay, so now I could just hit export. I could name this whatever I wanted. And then you can export it as an SVG. And that would be ready to go into Cricut Design Space and edit with or to cut. 
So that's SVG Trace, super simple. There is a pro version that you can pay for. Um, I believe if you download the app, you do have to pay for it at that point. But if you use the desktop version, there's a lot you can do with free. So that's nice. So now let's look at the other program you could use to convert your flat image into a SVG, and that is Inkscape. So Inkscape, again, very robust platform. You can use it for a lot of different things, but today I'm just gonna show you how to make an SVG out of it. So once you're in Inkscape and you're in like your new document here, we want to import our image, but this time we're gonna import it um, layer by layer. So I'm gonna go to File, Import, and I'm gonna go grab my artwork here. You can see that each layer is separate and it really doesn't matter which one you start with per se, but I like to start with just my bottom layer here. So I'm gonna open up those cherries. You don't have to change anything here, just click okay. And then here they are. Now, these are still a PNG. These are a rasterized image. They're not vectorized yet. So we have to do something called trace bitmap. And that's kind of what I was talking about earlier when I said that when we vectorize something, we're like basically telling the computer, we want like a map. We need a map of this thing. So that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna go to path, trace bitmap, and it's gonna open up this panel on the side here. I like to use a brightness cutoff just because I think it's the easiest one to use. There's several different options you can use here for how it's gonna detect your image that's there. Brightness cutoff works most of the time. You wanna set this threshold really high, like 0 0.990 or so. Um, and then you, I like to kind of leave these exactly how they are. Like, let's keep the speckles low. Let's smooth our corners so we don't have like these weird jagged edges that makes it hard for the Cricut to cut. If you've ever cut like a low quality SVG file, you know, because your Cricut will be over there going like around every corner and it's really frustrating. So I do smooth the corners and then I don't really worry about um, optimization too much. I love that Inkscape will show us a preview of what this is gonna look like, which is really nice. So you could change these and like see what kind of results it gets you um, to like see the difference. So once you've done that, you can just hit apply and it's gonna give us our little vectorized version, which is nice. And then we can change the color of it if we want. So we can come down here and just pick any old red, or I can use, um, where's my little eyedropper? Um, I could use my little eyedropper to say, actually, I just want it to be exactly the color I picked before. Then once you've got like your traced version, your vectorized version, you can delete the PNG version because that's basically just a reference for us. And then we're just gonna repeat that process. We're gonna do it again. And we're gonna go grab our second layer up, which is gonna be our little uh, stems here. Um, you can see my trace bitmap screen is already pulled up with the settings that I used before. So I can just go ahead and hit apply on that. And then I can come in and grab my little eyedropper, get that exact color that I had before, and then go delete the original and drop my cherries into place right here. So I'm gonna, I'll adjust the layers into the right like order at the end, but right now I just wanna get everything onto my page. So let's go get our third layer. That's our little faces. Hit apply. We don't have to change the color on this one cause it's just black, which is the default anyway. Go drop it into place. Repeat for our fourth and final layer, which is the pink. Oh no, we have an, another black layer on top of it. I forgot about that. So let's grab those. Let's make them pink using our eyedropper. Delete the original PNG. Drop that bad boy into place go bring in our final layer, which is that little tongue uh, accent mark there. So funny to like do a whole separate task for just like that one little piece. <laughs> Hilarious. Uh, we don't have to change the color of that guy and then delete the original. Now I can X out of this little trace bitmap map thing. We don't really need it anymore. And I can also double click to rename. So this is Valentine's 
And I can also name each uh, layer. So like this is the tongue accent. This is the uh, pink. This is the uh, faces, stems. Whoop, whoop, my bad. And then this is uh, hearts. So now I could like reorder these. Like I really want the stems to actually be like our bottom layer and I could just click and drag just like I would in Cricut Design Space. And then let's zoom in, whoops. Uh, zoom in a little bit here and make sure everything looks good. I do want to clean up uh, that little pink accent area like I did in SVG Trace where I have like a little extra dot right here. So I'm actually gonna go and click on this node selection tool here. And when I do that, you can see like there's a million little nodes. And that's where this is different than SVG Trace because it's like showing you Hey, here's the path that we found when we did this, which is really cool. It allows you a lot of customization. So you could truly come in and like, um, you could drag this out and like change the shape and the appearance of like different parts of your SVG if you wanted to. You have like a lot of customization options in Inkscape, which is what part of what makes it such a powerful tool. But I just wanna delete all these nodes right here because I don't want that little spot. Okay, so that is making an SVG in Inkscape. And honestly, super easy. So now all we have to do is hit file and we want to save it. And you can just save it directly as an Inkscape SVG or you can save it as a plain SVG. Now, a little note about that, either is typically fine, but sometimes plain SVGs are read a little easier by Cricut Design Space. So I would recommend just saving it as both and labeling the plain SVG as your Cricut version. Um, because Cricut Design Space tends to read those just a little bit better. I would also note that like whatever preview is on your canvas, um, like it, there is like a canvas size in uh, Inkscape and like my design here is like not even close to my canvas size. Whatever your canvas is, that's what your preview is gonna be in Cricut Design Space. So if you intend to sell this design, I would make sure that your uh, design is like kind of filling your canvas just so it looks normal when it comes into Cricut Design Space. Um, and then we could save it as an SVG. And that's it. That's the whole process. So that is how you turn a Procreate drawing into a multi-layered SVG cut file. If you wanna know more about making your own SVGs, let me know in the comments below. If you have questions about this process, let me know in the comments below. Definitely check out the rest of this series over on my YouTube channel. I have other videos about making your own SVGs. And while you're over there, go ahead and subscribe if you love the content because I will be making more stuff like this in the future. So let me know what you thought of this video. Let me know what questions you had. And until next time, happy SVG creating and happy crafting.